everybody, and welcome. And um, thanks again for joining us for this 14-day masterclass, um, How to Become a Better Bass Fisherman. And what this is going to be are sessions um, in front of the whiteboard, sessions on the boat, um, but more importantly, it's going to be all the knowledge that I have to help you become a better bass fisherman. So um, to kick this off, what we're really going to do is we're going to first talk about the actual largemouth bass because if we're going to catch more fish, then we have to simply understand the behaviors and the instincts of that fish. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is largemouth bass, you know, as a whole. And um, they live in, in, in climates from Florida to into Canada, and they live in ponds, rivers, um, big lakes, small lakes, brackish water, tidal water. So they're found just about everywhere. Um, one of the most important things about largemouth bass is to keep in mind is that they are a creature. So they need a certain type of climate, oxygen, and more importantly, food to stay alive. So when we look at the actual largemouth bass, what they eat, okay, there there's really can be broken down into a couple different categories. So number one, they can eat a shad base, okay, which is gonna include things like thread fins, Gizzard shad, um, it can eat um, bluebacks, okay, um, and that's more of a herring, but you know, when we break down the, the three different real styles, okay, um, the first one being shad. Now, um, sh particularly in lakes in the TVA region and throughout the country, you're going to find thread friends and gizzard. Now, Blueback lakes are, are completely different, and we'll go into, into depth more with the forge of what they are, but really, the second thing that we've got to really look at would be bluegills and perch. So, <clears throat> you're going to find bluegills and perch all around the country, and in different times of the year are going to be particularly uh, very important. So, bluegills and perch are more summer and fall seasonal patterns. Um, and then lastly, we move into the other category, which are going to be gray fish. Um, in certain bodies of water, all three of these will be present in a body of water. And what you've got to try and, and, and imagine is, you know, what are you trying to imitate and what type of species of these three are you trying to imitate? So, um, obviously when we get into bluegills, perch, and in these types of baits, okay, we're looking at swim jigs, okay, we're looking at, um, you know, flipping baits, um, possibly spinner baits, and chatter baits, and crank baits. So, <clears throat> when we're talking about crayfish, um, we're talking about jigs. Creature baits, and um, mostly things that are on the bottom, okay? And when we're talking about shad, we're talking about swim baits, top water, and spinner baits, and crank baits. So if you notice, as we go through this, there's, there's a lot of commonalities between them. So, you know, when you go out searching for fish for the first time on a body of water, it's smart to pick a lure or a bait that imitates most of these types of behaviors. So, um, if we break down the three main food sources, so we're looking at a shad base, bluegills and perch, and crayfish. So, I just wanted to run through that with you real quick just to talk about the actual different types um, of forage that a bass is going to eat. Now, they're opportunistic feeders, so they can pick up and eat just about anything that's out there. So, when we look at the next thing that I really want you to understand about the largemouth bass is the fact that um, they eat for two reasons. The first reason that they eat is they're hungry, okay? And during optimal water temp, of say 68 to 78 degrees, the largemouth bass is going to eat many times throughout the day. So um, they may eat every time they see something that looks good, okay? But when the temperatures are 
less than 68, say from 35 to 68, or from 78 plus, okay, they may not eat a whole lot. So this optimum water temperature, if we're targeting things that look just like what the bass is going to eat, then um, we can be really productive in these times. But when we're not in these times, we have to do the second thing, which is reaction. So you may have noticed that, you know, your Kevin Van Dams, Edwin Evers, you know, your professional anglers that power fish, the reason why they're so effective at what they do, okay, is because they trigger a reaction bite instead of a hunger bite, okay? Now, a reaction bite, um, maybe just like, you know, when somebody breaks into your house, you know, you get this reaction and you react to the situation that's around you, and a largemouth bass is the exact same way. So imagine that, <clears throat> you know, there's a dock, you know, and we're kind of taking a side shot here, and we've got fish located down here at the end of the pole. Well, if we flip our bait in and instantly it rushes down to the bottom, say with a, a half ounce jig, okay, and we startle this bass, he's going to jump on the bait real quick. He's going to do one of two things. He's either going to run away really fast, or he's going to jump after the bait really quick and grab it, okay? Um, the more times you can put your bait and make a fish react, the, the more fish you're going to catch throughout the day. So um, the reaction is so important, and I try to go after fish to get them to react. Now, when you actually catch a largemouth bass, um, there are certain things that you can notice by the fish itself to find out whether or not it has... Um, if it's living in an optimal area or if there's a bunch of fish around. So if you've ever caught a bass before and it looked like it was like a rhino back or very skinny, big head, small body, things like that, um, that is kind of the opposite of what I look for when I'm looking for a, a really good fishing location. What I'm looking for is what I like to call fat backs, fish that are just as wide as they are long, okay? Really, really fat fish because that tells me that that fish is living in an optimal condition. And for some reason or another, that portion of where I caught that fish is what I need to repeat. When I catch fish that are really skinny, sometimes they're just stray fish that you know can, um, can lead you down the wrong path of a direction to find a pattern and a bait source. So really pay particular attention to the actual physical you know, aspects of the bass. Is it, it, does it look healthy? If they look healthy, then most likely they're living in a healthy environment and they're going to to, there's going to be more fish living in that area. So the last thing I kind of want to discuss is um, the actual spawn, okay? There's a lot of, um, you know, the spring of the year can be a, um, a real, real difficult time in, in lakes and ponds and rivers and all those sorts of things. And what I want to break down with the spawn is um, kind of the cycle of, of how it happens. And um, so the largemouth bass, what happens is, is that if you've got a lake, and we're going to draw a lake here, and we've got a dam down here, and then we've got a creek arm that comes off, and then we have a long river arm that goes up to a river and comes down, and we've got a lake, and imagine our dam is down here. Now, in the spring of the year, okay, when you're going from winter to spring, imagine this entire lake, you know, generally down this end has a maximum depth of, say, 30 feet, and the river has 10 feet, and the pocket is going to have 10 feet, and the back of this pocket is going to have 10 feet. So imagine this entire thing is an ice cube, okay? And it's beginning to thaw in the spring. And what happens is, is that the ice that is thicker, because it is colder down this end, will keep the, the lake naturally colder. So when you're looking for the first fish to move up in the spring, what I'm looking for, okay, are the upper reaches. Um, of the bodies of water in the protected areas where it's going to thaw out quicker because once the bottom starts to get the sunlight, it starts to absorb that heat. So um, when that begins to happen, the male bass um, between temperatures of 50 to 62 degrees really start to rush the banks. And what they're doing is they are preparing themselves to make the nests of the, the, uh, the beds of the bass. So you know, when you're looking at the male bass that run to the banks first, and you know, it's very typical during this, this period of time, okay, that you may catch 50 bass a day, but they're all between 12 and 15 inches. Um, obviously not the particular fish that you're trying to locate to say win a tournament. 
what you what you really want to look for, okay, are the areas that the larger fish, okay, are waiting to move into. So you're looking for these staging areas, okay? And what you'll find is that when you catch one of those fish, they're a fat back, okay? These fish running the banks are gonna be real skinny, they're gonna be really long, um, and what we call buck bass. When you catch one of the fat back fish in these temperatures, there are going to be more fish located in that area. So once the water temperature hits between 62 and 68 degrees, the, the larger bass will move into the spawning areas and they will begin their spawn. They're really only there maybe three to five days. The females dump their eggs and they back out again, okay? Um, that's just what they do. So the males are there to protect the fry afterwards and then they go into their summer pattern. But what I really wanna stress here is when you catch a fish, really take notice of what the fish is. You know, how healthy is the fish? What size is it? You know, like-sized fish like to live together because your larger fish, when you find those main schools of them, okay, they, um, there's a reason why they got so big. You know, they know where the best bait is, they know where the best location to live in is. So um, behaviors and the, the spawn is, is so important. Now, let's fast forward a little bit to the fall. And the fall of the year, <clears throat> what happens is kind of the opposite. So the, the summertime fish come out of the main bodies of water and they go right back to these pockets again. Um, and that is because that's where the shad goes, okay? Um, again, it's going to be very important to notice the size and the quality and the consistency of the fish you're catching. So um, once you catch a fish over, say, three pounds, that's kind of a key that says, hey, I need to slow down in this area and find out what there is more to this area and fish it a little bit thorough. Um, the largemouth bass is, is simply incredible. There, there's a multitude of ways to catch them. Um, some days when you think you have it all figured out, the very next day you go back out and you, and you catch nothing. And that's because they moved or that um, the conditions change. So um, that's what I absolutely love about bass fishing. So um, food sources, water temperature, and quality of the fish and the size of the fish is really going to dictate, you know, if you're in the right area or not. So um, I appreciate you watching this session. And... Um, Tomorrow we'll have another video that drops in here and I'm looking forward to it, so thank you.